Aloha everyone, my name is Kapehe. You can call me Cap for short. In today's video, we are gonna go over seven GitHub commands that you may not know. So this article that I wrote was recently published on scotch.io, you can find it there, but we're gonna go through each one step-by-step -step in the terminal so we can see how each one actually works in a project. Okay, so I have pulled up my portfolio project here in VS Code. I'm just gonna be editing my name over and over and committing that change can kind of see how these GitHub command commands work. So we're going to be committing, changing branches, all that kind of stuff, but we're not going to be doing much in VS Code itself. Most of it will be done in terminal today. So in my terminal, I'm going to be within my project. The first one that we're going to talk about is git add p. So this command Many of us have done git add and then the file name or git add period to add all the all the files that we've changed at once. We've all used that a bunch of times, but what does git add dash p do? So have you ever wanted to commit just a section of a file and not the entire thing? So let's go back to VS Code. So in here, I'm going to update. I'm just going to change my name to kapehe underscore OK and save that. And if we head back to our terminal, we're going to see that indeed index.html was changed. So normally we could do git add index.html or git add period, and that would add all of it. But let's say we had a bunch of different changes within the file and we only wanted to commit the change that was the name update. So if we did git add dash p, we would see what it was before and what it is now. So the red is what it was before, green what it is now. You're gonna see stage this hunk. So Git calls it hunks. <laughs> and in there, it's gonna give you a bunch of different letters that you can choose from in what you wanna do with that hunk. So Y, we'll go down the list. Y is stage that hunk. N is do not stage this hunk. G is, and it looks like a Q, but it's a G. Select a different hunk to go to. A is stage this hunk and all the other hunks in this file. So it's kind of just like doing Git add and then the file name. D is do not stage this hunk or any of the other hunks in this file. So we're kind of canceling this whole command. And E is edit the current hunk manually. That question mark will print help. So we're going to do Y because we want this one to be staged. And that's git add dash P. In our next git command that we're going to talk about, it's going to be git commit dash dash amend. So sometimes if you are creating a commit and you do your message for the commit and you press enter too quickly, you may have done a typo, you may. So here's where you can go back and actually edit that title that you gave that commit. So let's do git status. We see that our index.html file is ready to be committed. So we're going to do git commit dash m. This is a commit and I'm going to make a mistake. Um, and we're going to push that. So I want to go back and be like, oh, no, I, I put too many T's on commit. So let's change that. So we're going to do git commit dash dash amend dash M. This is a commit. Now it's been changed from this is a commit with lots of T's to this is a commit with one T. So now that has been updated and now we can go ahead and push that and our coworkers will see that we can actually spell commit correctly. All right, so for our next GitHub command that we're gonna talk about, this one is git reset dash dash soft, capital H-E-A-D, tilde, and a one. Okay, so that's a lot going on in that command, but let's break it down. So git reset has a variety of things that can trail it. There's dash dash hard, mix, soft, we're gonna talk about soft. So have you ever committed something and you want to remove that last commit, but keep the changes that you had in it? So this command does just that. So let's go back into our VS code. Let's update just the name, just so we have a change. Check the status on that. And indeed, index.html has been updated. So let's add that in. Check the status again, and we're ready to go. Okay, so we are ready to commit. So git commit dash M and we'll do testing soft. 
So that's what we're testing right now. So we've created that commit. Now let's say we're like, oh no, we haven't put in all of the changes we wanted for that commit or we wanna edit it a little bit. So let's remove that commit, but keep all the changes that were still in there. So we're gonna do git reset dash dash soft capital head and then one. Now, how do we know if that was actually successful? We're going to try and push and it's going to say that everything's up to date. There's nothing to push. Why? Because we took that commit away. There's nothing to commit. So if we check again, we'll do git commit dash m testing dash dash soft again. And we'll do git push origin master. Now, indeed, we see that that commit went through. We didn't reset it with the git reset and we were able to push. I know it's a long, a long command, but it's very useful in cases like this where you need to go back, you need to edit, or you need to add more. And you get to keep all your changes, but just take away that commit and continue to work in it. Okay, in this next command, we're gonna go over git checkout. Now we've all used git checkout, but there's a little more to it that can kind of be really useful. Let's talk about it. So we're gonna do git checkout the name of a branch, and then the name of a file. So let's say we do git checkout um, branch name index.html. So it'll look something like that. So let's create a branch. Git checkout dash b, we'll do kpehe test. So now we have switched to a new branch, and we can just double check that we are on kpehe test, perfect. So from there, we are in a new branch. We're going to update. We're gonna go back and update the name again. Save that. But now that we are in a different branch, git status. So on branch kpehe test, we have that changed. So git add, and indeed it has been added. So in that branch, we are ready to commit. We're gonna do git commit dash m testing git checkout branch file. So right here, we're going to commit that and we're gonna leave that commit there. So say we are in master, let's get checkout master. Let's head on over there. Let's clear, so we are in master now. So let's say you were in another branch and you knew that on kpehe-test, there was a file that you needed. You wanted to test it on your own branch. You wanted to test it however you wanted to. You just want to pull in one file from that branch that's been updated and committed. So we're going to do git checkout. We're going to name that branch, which is kpehe test. And remember, we're in master right now, so we're pulling from another, another branch, and we're going to pull from the index.html. So we've pulled the updated file, and to double check, we can do git status. And here we see, indeed, that on master, we have that updated committed index.html that the kpehe-test branch worked on, but we were able to pull it in with the git checkout branch name file name command. So that can be really useful when you want to see how someone else's code is going to work with your updated code, and you don't want to pull in all the changes that they have, but just rather one and see how it works with your stuff. So that can be really helpful, especially with teams. All right, so in this next command, we're going to go over git cherry pick. So this command is a little bit like the last one we did, the git checkout branch name, file name. But rather than diving into a branch and picking out one particular or a particular file, rather than doing that, we want to pull in the entire commit from a particular branch. And that's what cherry pick does. So let's create a new branch. We'll do git checkout. And I've already created this earlier, so we're just going to move on over to it. So we're in the branch Kapehe test cherry. Now that we're here, let's go create our simple change so that we can have something to save. We're going to change the name. We're going to check that status, and indeed, index.html has been changed. So let's add that. Check it again. It's ready to be committed. Testing, 
cherry pick is my commit message and I'm going to commit my name change into the commit testing cherry pick. So now that that is done, we want to head on back over to master or another branch just for this example, we're going to use master. We're going to do git checkout master. So we're in master and our teammate has told us, hey, in Kapehe test cherry, you're going to want that commit. It's going to be very useful for testing out your code, that kind of stuff. So we want the entire commit. We want all the files. In our case, we only have one, but if we had multiple, this works great. So to run that, we do git, git cherry pick. And we're going to do kapehe dash test dash cherry. We hit enter and indeed we see that testing cherry pick from kapehe test cherry branch was indeed pulled over and we have that in master. And now we can test all the code, all the files that was in that commit from that branch on a different branch. And it re it's really useful for teams who want to look at other people's code and how it works with their code and if things are going to work out, if it looks good, that kind of stuff. So I really like cherry pick and yeah, try it out for yourself. All right. In our next example, we're going to go over git stash. I've used this a lot, but maybe some of you don't know about this command. It's very, very useful when you have a bunch of changes, but you need to move out of this particular branch and you don't want to commit anything yet. So this command is for uncommitted changes in a file to kind of store it for you. So we are in master. We're going to go into, no, let's, let's change the branches. Hit checkout. We'll do Kapehe test. So now we're in the branch Kapehe test. And in here, let's go again and change the name just so we have a change. Come back. And indeed, index.html has been updated. So now that we see that we do, in, do indeed have a change in our index.html file, we don't want to add it, we don't want to commit it. So if we want to leave this particular branch, but we want to save all these changes, we're going to run the command git stash. So it's saved our working directory in index state. So on Kapehe test, we've saved that simple name change that we did in our index.html. And we can move on over to master and everything's up to date. There's nothing, there's nothing there. Now, if we wanted to get those changes back and then continue on to commit or continue working in that branch, we go back to that branch. Let's actually clear this out. We'll go back to that branch and we'll do the command git stash pop. So this reverses everything that we just stashed. And in our case, index.html was the one that was changed. And it shows us the red again saying that that was a change that we made. And now it's back. It's active again in the Kapehe test branch. And now we can, we can continue working on it or we can continue to add it and commit it and all that kind of good stuff. So that's very useful when it comes to not having to commit things that you don't want to, but you want to save all your changes. In our last command, we're going to talk about git help. So this is very useful when you don't know what a command means. Somebody on Stack Overflow is like, oh yeah, use this command. It'll solve all your problems. But you're kind of a little weary about just typing in a random git command that you don't know much about. So if we type in the command git help and we'll do commit, hit enter, it'll tell us all the things we need to know about commit and what it does, all that good stuff. To get out of this, just simply hit Q and you'll get back out of it. Now to take that command one step further, this one's actually pretty cool. Do git help dash W and we'll do the same git command that we want to uh, learn more about. But the dash W is going to actually open up the browser. <laughs> so let's see what happens here. And over in my browser, git commit opened up and we can learn all the things about, about commit that you would ever want to know about, all the things you can add to it. And so adding that dash W 
actually takes us to the web and takes us to maybe a, a little easier way to read more on a command. I hope those commands helped you out. I know there are some that are in there that you may use, you may have used a lot, and there's some in there that you've never tried, but now's your chance. They're really easy, they're really useful, and once you get that kind of stuff down, your work can be more productive, you can be more productive with your team, with your own code, and let me know how it goes, let me know in the comments below, and let me know if there's any other Git commands that you think are lesser known, that not a lot of people know about, but have been really useful in your work. Thanks for watching.